There we go. Success. All right, guys. So we will start on chapter 18 on the blood today. Again, we'll have three lectures or three days to cover this chapter. Um, you guys will see in the beginning of each chapter, I give you guys a list of objectives. The objectives are essentially the things I want you to focus on, um, the things that you should kind of be gearing your studying towards as you go through the chapter. So by the end of this chapter on the blood, you guys should be able to describe the physical characteristics of blood, the main components, so what's in blood, and then what are the functions of blood. You should be able to talk about the composition and the function of plasma, which is just the liquid or fluid component of blood. You should be able to talk about the structure and function of our red blood cells, um, which are our formed elements in our blood, and then hemoglobin, which is the main functional unit of the red blood cell. And then also tell me about how red blood cells are made, how they're recycled, um, how we get rid of all of the waste products, all of that. You should be able to talk about the importance of blood typing, okay? So figuring out if you're A positive, O negative, AB positive. Um, and then what the basis is for blood incompatibilities. Okay, so when, what happens if you transfuse a blood type that's not the right type, or not a compatible blood. You guys should also be able to categorize white blood cells um, based on their structure and their function. And then we'll talk a little bit about the production of each type of white blood cell, because the production of um, like lymphocytes versus the other white blood cells is a little bit different. You guys should also be able to talk about the structure, function, and production of platelets, the last type of formed element in our blood. And then also we'll talk a lot about blood clotting. Okay, so the ways that we prevent blood loss after an injury um, will be pretty much the whole third lecture. So that's a lot, it's a big one. So this whole first section in AMP2 is on the cardiovascular system. This the whole first chunk of AMP2 focuses on the cardiovascular system. And the cardiovascular system includes three main components. What does cardio mean? Heart, vascular, vessels, right, pertaining to the vessels. So the cardiovascular system includes the heart, it includes the blood vessels, and then it also includes the blood that flows through those vessels. Um, the heart is this strong muscular pump, right? It provides that force that's necessary to push the blood through the vessels. Um, when we talk about the vessels, the vessels are like the roadway, right? These are this, this conducting system or all of these interconnected tubes that carry the blood throughout the body. What we're going to concentrate on right now, though, this chapter is the blood. Okay, we'll do the heart and the blood vessels next. Right now, we're really just focused on the blood. And the blood is the fluid medium of the cardiovascular system. If you guys remember from the very beginning of the MP1 when we talked about tissues, um, blood is a type of connective tissue. It's a highly specialized connective tissue because it is liquid, right? It's pretty much pure fluid. When we look at blood, we see that it has two major components. Um, it has this fluid matrix, which we'll see in a second is called plasma, and then it's got a bunch of cells that are suspended in that fluid matrix, um, and we call those cells formed elements. So blood is responsible for really transporting materials all around the body, right? Bringing things to our cells and carrying things away from our cells. Um, the blood carries things like the respiratory gases, right? Oxygen to the cells and then CO2 away from our cells. It also carries nutrients. So things like glucose, amino acids, fatty acids, um, vitamins. Right? All of these useful things that our cells need um, to function and have energy and make proteins travel through the bloodstream. Um, hormones also travel through the bloodstream. Remember, those are just their chemical messengers right, that tell cells what to do. Uh, immune system components. So these could be things like white blood cells. This could be antibodies. Um, it could be any number of, of chemical messenger that's utilized for the immune system travel through the bloodstream. Waste products, right? A cell makes a bunch of wastes and then you got to get rid of them somehow, right? How do you get rid of them? Well, initially they go into the bloodstream and the bloodstream carries them away. So things like, um, what's a waste product that your muscles make when you use anaerobic metabolism? Lactic acid. Like lactic acid um, or uric acid is produced from protein metabolism. 
these are wastes and we need to take them away from our cells somehow so they don't build up. How do we do that? The bloodstream. Okay, so the blood is this transport medium. It carries, think of it like a highway system, right? And that's how things travel. You travel in the road, in your body, things travel in the bloodstream. Um, now, when we talk about things traveling through the bloodstream and things getting delivered to cells and being carried away from cells, we have to at least kind of mention the flow of materials because I think when people think of it, they think, okay, here's the blood, like say oxygen, right? I'm giving oxygen to the cells. So it goes from the blood to the cell. Mm -hmm. It actually doesn't go from the blood to the cell. Um, we have interstitial fluid involved. What's interstitial fluid? If you have me, you better tell me, what is interstitial fluid? <laughs> What's that? Okay, it's fluid in the body, but not all fluid in the body, right? Where is it? Outside the cells, between the cells. Thank you. The fluid that surrounds our cells, right? So, like, if you look, if this is a cell, this is my blood in the blood vessel. This cell is surrounded by interstitial fluid, like most cells in our body. Like your, the cells in your skin, um, like epidermal cells, they're packed really close together. We don't have that interstitial fluid. But most cells in the body, remember, are surrounded by interstitial fluid. So when we start to talk about the flow of materials, things going to our cells and going away from the cells, you just have to remember that there's this interstitial fluid kind of intermediary. So these things are going to cells, right? Like oxygen, we deliver to our cells. Nutrients, like glucose, we deliver to our cells. Hormones, we can deliver to our cells. So this stuff is going to our cells. It goes from the blood into the interstitial fluid. Then from the interstitial fluid into the cell. And this might seem really stupid. Like this might be like, okay, so what, who cares? But it's actually really important. Um, when we go through, we start to talk about blood vessels, we'll talk about um, you know, capillary exchange and diffusion and how things are moving in and out of the blood. And it's really important to note that we're talking about the blood and the interstitial fluid um, when we talk about the way that things move and the, the diffusion and concentration gradients. Okay, so it is, it, it's small, but it is important. Um, the opposite's also true. So this is stuff that's going from cells, right, and getting carried away. So waste products, essentially. Carbon dioxide, right, which our cells make as a waste when we make ATP. Um, that's gonna go from the cell to the interstitial fluid, and then from the interstitial fluid into the bloodstream. So the blood has many important functions. Um, we've kind of already talked about this first one here. Um, the main and kind of most obvious function, I think, of the blood is the transportation of dissolved substances. Right? We just said that anything, most things that move through the body move through the bloodstream. If I have oxygen I want to deliver, it goes into my blood and then it goes off to the periphery. If I have waste product to carry away, they go into the blood and then they get carried to wherever, the liver, the kidneys, the lungs, wherever we're going to get rid of them. So things move through the bloodstream. The blood is also important for the regulation of the pH and ionic composition or ionic concentration of our interstitial fluid. Okay, so think about it. Like if you have a cell and it's surrounded by interstitial fluid and then here's my bloodstream, right? Remember that we want to remain homeostatic, right? We want to remain, you know, a nice normal functioning level for everything. So calcium concentration, right? pH, sodium concentration, potassium, chloride, all of these things we want to remain in a nice, normal range. So if I have a ton of, say, sodium building up here, okay, tons and tons and tons of sodium, that's not good for this cell, right? So I need to carry it away, and the bloodstream does that. Remember, diffusion says that things will naturally go from high concentration to low concentration. So the sodium will enter into the bloodstream and the blood will carry it away and then kind of disperse it to all different areas. So we don't get these pockets of really, really high concentrations. The blood just kind of takes them and shoots them off everywhere so that we get nice, even concentrations throughout the interstitial fluid in the body. Same thing with pH, right? We don't want the pH to be super acidic around certain cells. We don't want it to be super basic either. 
So we can utilize the bloodstream in order to um, kind of disperse those ions to address the pH. And towards the end of the chapter, we'll talk about um, some buffer systems that we have in the bloodstream that help to keep the pH of the blood at a normal level. Um, the blood is important for decreasing the amount of fluid that we lose at an injury site, right? And we mentioned this before. How does the blood do that? Clotting. Right? If you cut yourself, something happens, you break a blood vessel, the blood starts to leak out. Um, your blood has proteins in it that start the clotting process. They make it nice and sticky so that you can kind of plug up that tear in the vessel and decrease the amount of blood that you lose. Um, the blood is important in defending the body against toxins and pathogens. Um, a pathogen is just a disease-causing organism. Okay, so something that causes a disease, that could be a bacterium, that could be a virus, fungus, anything that can cause a disease in you. Um, and the blood is really important in defending the body against these things. We've got white blood cells present that defend the body. Um, we also have things like antibodies that travel through the bloodstream. Um, and we'll talk about that as we go through the next few chapters, but the blood is extremely important in defending against infection and disease. Finally, um, the blood's important in stabilizing the body temperature. Um, and we do this in a couple different ways. One, the blood allows us to have kind of a, a nice stable body temperature over the whole body. Right? If I start running, where am I going to generate a ton of heat? My legs, right? My muscles are working, they're generating heat. But I'm not going to have super hot legs and super cold upper body, right? Because that heat is going to disperse. It's gonna be absorbed by the blood, and then the blood constantly travels, and it carries that heat everywhere. And that allows us to have a pretty uniform temperature throughout the body. Um, the blood is also, or we, we also utilize blood or regulate blood flow in order to help maintain a homeostatic or normal body temperature, right? So if we were really, really hot, where would our blood start flowing? The surface, excellent. You know, when you, if I'm really hot, my face looks red, right? I'm gonna get really flushed because you bring all the blood to the surface. The reason for that is that then when the sweat evaporates, remember, it takes the heat energy away. So you essentially wanna bring the blood to the surface so you can let all that heat go from your body. When you're really, really cold, have you ever noticed like what your, your fingers and your limbs start to look like? Are they really red or pale? Pale, right? When you're really cold, they get pale. Your hands and your feet get cold first. That's because the blood does the opposite. Instead of coming to the surface, the blood all stays within, right? The blood stays in your core and it keeps your brain and your organs warm. And you don't want it at the surface because you don't want to lose the heat from it. You're trying to keep all that heat inside of you. So we can alter blood flow um, in order to kind of try and keep our temperature homeostatic. Oh, that fell. 